We got a market that is higher today, up about 20 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Thanks for being with us today. We'll continue to follow the very latest uh, in the fight against ISIS all day here. Meanwhile, it's time for Varney and Company. Stuart, have a great show. Thank you, Maria. The president takes the war against ISIS to the United Nations. Like the war on carbon, it gets a very lukewarm reception. Good morning, everyone. The world's leaders are skeptical about the president's bombing campaign in Syria. They don't trust American military power. The president did not get much support from his audience today, barely a ripple of applause. Zero response when he said ISIS must be degraded and ultimately destroyed. Late developments. The FBI warns that bombing over there encourages the terrorists to come here. And reports that the Khorasan group has been planning attacks with hard-to-detect explosives in America. Criticism, too. <laughs> Our bombs have destroyed buildings, broken windows, but not killed terrorists. This is a two-war president fighting ISIS and fighting carbon. And guess what? Gold, oil, stocks, barely changed. Varney and Company is about to begin. Two days into the airstrikes against ISIS in Syria and the market, well, basically, it is taking a big yawn. Look at this. The Dow Jones Industrial Average in the first, what, hour, uh, hour and a half of business this Wednesday morning, virtually unchanged. We're up just 22 points. That is it, holding at 17,000. You would think we would see some kind of reaction in gold as a flight to safety in times of trouble. Not happening. Gold is down a buck eighty this morning, twelve twenty an ounce. The same story is true for the price of oil. Turmoil in the Middle East. America is involved, and guess what? The price of oil is down just a little. We're off twenty cents, back to ninety-one dollars a barrel. Lieutenant Colonel Oliver North joins us now from DC. Colonel, always a pleasure to have you with us. I'm sure you were watching the president's presentation to the UN there when he called for the Muslim world to reject ISIS and reject Al Qaeda. There was absolutely no response whatever from that audience. What do you make of that? Underwhelming. Stuart, obviously his plan to get more allies for what I'm calling Operation Arab Face isn't working in gathering people around him. No standing ovation like President right. Bush received when he went to the United Nations to get them behind our effort even to go into Iraq, which of course was the terrible war that we never should have fought according to this president. Look at this has got to be, Stuart, something other than putting an Arab face on the campaign against ISIS or decapitating a new terror group that we'd not heard much about until well, we bombed them two nights ago. You've called publicly for American ground troop. Boots on the ground is the expression. That's what you think is necessary. But hold on, for, before we get to that, w sure. how effective do you think these airstrikes have been? Because there has been significant criticism that we're just blowing out windows and destroying buildings and not killing terrorists. Well, I, we may have killed some terrorists. We, we really don't know because the BDA, the bomb damage assessment that we were promised was going to come out yesterday, didn't. And we conducted, according to the, the reports from the Pentagon, and I got it this morning, uh, they woke me up at the 3 o'clock in the morning when the bell went off, we conducted two great big airstrikes on ISIS, or excuse me, extremist vehicles in Iraq, and two more in Syria. Now, this is shock and no, it's not. It's awe shucks instead of shock and awe. Look, at, the, the, the problem with this is if we really intend to destroy ISIS, this is not the way to go about it. Can you tell me who's paying for this? I know that America is leading the bombing campaign. I know we have five relatively wealthy Sunni Arab states supporting us as part of the coalition. Who's paying for this? Are, are the Arabs paying at all? No, we, we really don't know because, of course, this qu question can't quite be answered yet. My guess is no one is paying for it except you, me, and the rest of the American taxpayers at this point. Now, you're right. It's at least Saudi Arabia and the UAE can pay. Jordan, of course, as you know, Stuart, is a basket case. They've absorbed almost a million and a half refugees from this long civil war going on inside Syria. Bahrain has its own problems. Here's a Shiite majority country with a Sunni government and, of course, lots of internal discard. Gutter, which is, of course, rich in natural gas, has been supporting everybody else out there. The Al Thani dynasty has been supporting radical Islamists like Hamas, Al Qaeda, Al Nusra. And where, by the way, is our NATO ally Turkey in all of this? 
Well, it, uh, the, the, the president did say again in his speech this morning, there will be no boots on the ground. Yeah. And that being the case, how long is this thing going to go on for? Because, uh, I mean, you've said yourself that you, you can't kill ISIS with air power alone. Yeah, air power is great. No, no one believes that more than a marine infantry an infantryman because having friendly air power overhead really works. The problem is air power alone has never freed a hostage, never captured an enemy combatant, and to seize terrain and rescue hostages and take prisoners, that requires rough men with rifles, boots on the ground. There are no coalition boots on the ground in Syria. There weren't any yesterday, there's none today, and there's not going to be any more for many months to come. That, that is really the big problem. Admiral Kirby is bragging about the fact that we're really good at training, but training 5,000 Free Syrian Army troops in Saudi Arabia over the next 12 months is mission impossible. And by the way, there are now nearly 3 million Syrian refugees in Jordan, Lebanon, and Turkey. How about recruiting some of them so you have much more than 5,000 a year from now? Because there's no doubt ISIS is growing at an astronomical rate. They're, they're rapidly heading toward infinity because they've more than doubled in size in the last month. If you do the math, they could be at 100,000 by the time that 5,000 got back from Saudi Arabia uh. to enter the fight and a two-front war against Assad and ISIS. All right, Colonel, before we leave you, I, I want you to get your take on this. Uh, President Obama stepping off Marine One, saluting with a coffee cup in his hand. You're a military man. What's your response to that, Colonel? Well, uh, here's what's going to happen. The Marines are now issuing an order, Stuart, requiring all Marines to carry in their right pocket a paper cup just in case they ever meet the Commander-in-Chief. And if he salutes with one in his hand, the Marines are going to hold theirs up as well. Sarcasm is a low Sorry. form of wit, but I can tell by your shaking of your head, you don't approve, do you? I do not, and it's unfortunately very, very disrespectful, but it just shows you where this man's coming from. This is the guy who repeatedly said that U.S. Navy corpsmen were out there serving in the battlefield. Ouch. I, I'm alive today because of my <laughs> Navy corpsman. Yeah, indeed. Colonel Oliver North, thanks very much, sir. Appreciate it. You're Stuart. Much more on the president's two wars with Ambassador John Bolton. He joins us in our next hour. Here's the question for him. Which war is the president focused on? ISIS or climate change? Top of the hour.